Taylor, hello. Can you talk to me for a little bit? Hi, Annalise. I'm on my lunch break right now, so it's a perfect time. Well, listen, I'm over at your guys' house right now, and I have a few things to say about the state of the place. Um, you're at our house? Um, how did you get in there? Was the door left unlocked before we left? No, the door was locked when I got here. I have a spare key to your place, so I used that to unlock the door and get in. Huh? You used the spare? I don't remember you having one from us, though. Well, the last time you two went on vacation together for a while and left the house empty, you gave me the key so that I could check up on the place, right? Your cat needed someone to watch it. And so that's when your husband handed me this key. Um, is that so? I guess I kind of remember some of that. Does my husband still know that you're holding on to that spare key that he gave you? Because he told me that he asked for it back from you when we got home and never told me that you still held on to it. Well, I haven't spoken to him about it anymore, so he does not. But we don't need to worry about that. What I want to know about right now is what's in your fridge. You are working right now, yet you have nothing prepared for dinner in here. I usually make something up when I get home from work. I don't like having things sit in the fridge all day to be reheated for dinner when making fresh food is much better tasting. At least, that's what I think. You say that like you'll be home in time to make a decent dinner, though. But you're working full time now and aren't back until five or six, right? That means you're getting home at the same time as my son. Do you have enough time, then, to make him a good meal? Because I'm sure my son is pretty hungry when he gets home and doesn't want to wait on you. There are times where I make something in advance for us to eat, but other times I like to start cooking when I get home. And he knows that already, so he never bugs me about it. It doesn't even look like there's anything in the freezer, either. What are you planning to make today? Today my husband plans on making something for us. We like to both cook on different days to even out the workload. And I think today he said he'd be going to the grocery store after work to pick some ingredients up for tonight. Huh? You guys are both cooking? Yes. Taylor, you've been making my son cook food for you guys as well? Yes, because both of us are working full-time jobs. What the hell do you think you're doing to him? Even if the both of you are currently working, the man and the woman have to do different things in the relationship, right? So that means you both have different workloads. Never make my son do any of the cooking or cleaning in this house again. It's your job as the wife to make sure that the men in the house get to have it easy, right? Well, this is something that both of us have talked about and decided on. So it's not like I'm the one forcing him to do anything like that. Rather the opposite, actually. He was the one that brought it up to me first that we both do the same amount of work at home. And he particularly said that he likes to cook as well, and I love that he does because his cooking is amazing. That has nothing to do with what's going on here. I allowed you to marry my son because I thought you'd do your best to support him and make sure that he's happy. So right now it feels like you've scammed me. But the two of us like to support one another equally in this house, so... Well, I don't like that! But this isn't your house, and he and I can do whatever we want in it without having you be there to decide for us. Today, you are going to be the one cooking dinner for him. Well, can I talk with my husband about that first? I mean, this was all his idea. Actually, why don't you talk to him about it if you're so upset that he's cooking and stuff too? Are you going to go against what your husband's mother is asking you to do? I didn't mean it like that. I'm just saying that you don't really get a say in what happens between us. And that whole idea of the woman always having to do everything for the men in the house is ancient. Ancient? Listen, Taylor, I'm not wasting all my time trying to explain basic knowledge to you. So you listen and do as I've asked or else there will be severe punishments. Now, I'm going to have to come over every day from now on to check on you. Every day? I have to now, right? I want to make sure that every day you're making the most well-balanced foods for my son so that he can stay strong and healthy. I will not ever let you cook him some kind of frozen meal or anything unhealthy. So if you'd like to stop wasting my time by having me over every day, then start acting like the wife I want you to be and let my son relax. <laughs>
Hey, Taylor, do you not have any ice cream here? I haven't been buying ice cream for a little while now. Neither of us have been eating it lately, so there's no point in having it when it'll probably go to waste getting freezer burn. Then when you finish work today, make sure to buy some ice cream to bring home. And it can't be any of that cheap stuff, okay? I want it to be the most expensive stuff they have at the store so that I know it's good quality. And I ask that you buy two tubs of it. I want there to be enough for me as well, and my son deserves to have ice cream at all times because that's his favorite treat. Um, Annalise, does this mean that you're back inside our house again? I am, but what does that mean to you? My husband told you to give him that duplicate key back, didn't he? Have you still not given it to him? What's wrong with me holding on to it longer? I'm your mother-in-law, after all. And it was him that gave me this key in the first place back when you went on vacation. And that was because we were both gone for a while and needed someone to check up on the house and our cat. But right now, you keep coming to our house every single day, and you just coming in like that all the time is a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry, but you're really going to have to give that back to us and stop intruding on our lives, okay? And just tell me outright that I'm causing you troubles, okay? But look, Taylor, I'm not going to stop coming to your house whenever I want. Until you've proven to me that you can make meals for my son every day, and good meals at that, I'm going to have to keep coming to check up on you. And since you told me your concerns, I have been making food for him every day. I don't think I've eaten any of his cooking for a week now because of the changes you've asked for. I've even gotten all the things I need to make him some chili tonight for dinner. Ah, well, about that. I threw all the ingredients in that away. What? Taylor, are you really going to force my son to eat something as disgusting as chili? I took a sip of the soup you had already made for it, and it was gross. So gross, actually, that I had to get into your wine cabinet and take a swig from something in there. Uh, is that right? I'd been making that since yesterday, and when I tasted it, the flavor was perfectly fine. And now you've gone into the wine cabinet? Annalise, I'm not sure which bottle you took a drink out of, but those are not cheap. And I had to drink that wine only because you don't know a thing about cooking. I don't even like wine that much, so I had to spit a lot of it out after. Your flavor palette is worse than that of a baby's. Ugh, I wonder if this is all because of how you were raised. You were only raised by your father, so you never learned the correct way to cook and how to know if it's good tasting or not. My dad always made me some of the best dishes in that house. And because of that, I have been able to learn a lot about cooking and how to do it right. I even took some classes in college for culinary arts so that I could be on par with my dad's cooking. Ha! You think that having learned about cooking from him will have made your palate any better? I think that your dad was just bad at cooking, and so your palate is skewed. Why are you saying things like that? What help does that do in our current situation? I'm sorry, but I'm not cooking food for you in my house, am I? So stop complaining about it all and just go home. None of this is affecting you in any way, so stay out of our business, please. Well, I'm telling you that I'm right here to help you do your job right. I've been thinking this about you for a while now, but although you are my son's wife, there is nothing about you that makes you worth being married to. So if you'd like me to start thinking differently of you, then maybe it's time you start doing things for me, too. Is this your reason for throwing out today's meal? That couldn't be my reason for it. Don't think of me as some kind of monster, okay? That is very rude of you. I went and tasted that food for your sake and my son's. I'm afraid of you feeding my son garbage, and garbage needs to be thrown out because it cannot be saved. But was there any point to throwing out the food and ingredients that I'd already put together for tonight? Even if you don't want my husband eating that chili, I would have still eaten it. I don't like people wasting food like that when the prices of it all are going up. If I weren't to throw it out now, I'm sure you would have forced my son to eat it when I'm not around. And my son is far too nice a man to tell you to make him another dish when the food you've cooked is so bad. So I just saved him today from having to worry about throwing up all over the dining table. Then why not next time you and I work together to cook something up for dinner? That way you can show me how to cook a proper meal and you can see what your son says about it in person. Why should I have to cook with you? 
My husband tells me that my cooking is delicious. I hear from him every time that he's happy with what I cook, and he says thank you for it. So I want to see if what you help me make is any better. I've noticed, though, that you always head home right before my husband gets home, right? Well, if you're so confident that my husband doesn't like what I make, then you throw it out in front of him and see what he thinks. I have a job of my own making food for my husband back at home. I do not have the time to be around your house all dang day. Just like I have been, I'll be coming over every day to check what food you're making and see if it's any good. And any day that I'm not able to come over, do not make my son cook for you. I'll ask him to make sure that you're staying in line, because the moment you take a step out of line, I'll be on you. Annalise, are you in our house right now? Yes, I sure am. And? Aren't you at work right now, though? How would you know that I'm just getting into your house? Because I just saw you on the security camera to our house. No way! Uh, have you been watching me this whole time? I had the camera installed a while ago to watch our cat while we were at work. If you don't like being seen through it, then stop coming into our house uninvited. If you have the money to spend on a stinky cat, then you have the money to start saving for a baby, right? Well, you are always working alongside my son, so you could never have the time to have a baby. Don't tell me that you're the kind of person that doesn't want kids. I do want kids. Then why haven't you quit your job yet and stayed at home full time? I think that women are a lot more happy being at home doing chores and raising kids rather than working a job. And I'd be happy if you left me to decide for myself when I want to have and raise kids. You saying things like that all the time will see your healthy eggs go to waste and rot away. You could have said that in a way that was a bit less horrific. Well, I'm just telling you the truth the way I see it. And another thing, what the hell is this that you've made for dinner? It looks like something someone vomited out. Are you talking about the beef stew that I've made? That's it. When I got a glance of the nasty soup sitting in that bowl, I wanted to vomit myself. When are you going to be able to cook a decent meal for my son? I'll throw this stew out as well for you today. When you get home today, you make something that's at least half decent for my son to eat. Hmm? Is my husband not home right now? Huh? What do you mean? I'm talking about your son. Right now, he should be at work like you, right? Today is a Tuesday, and so the two of you should be getting into another week of work. No, today he has the day off because he had to work extra late last week and so was given today off as a present. What? So you're telling me he's home right now? I'm sure that you're going to get upset when you hear this, but today I was having my husband cook us our dinner. And my husband told me around lunch today that he had made beef stew for us to eat tonight. Stop making jokes about this. When I came into the house, the only thing here was your cat. Are you trying to get me all worked up by making up lies like that? I knew it. No, I'm telling you the truth right now. There was just a noise. Annalise... Um, it's saying that you've seen my messages, but you're not replying to me. What happened to you? Could this mean that my husband really is there with you? <laughs> um, Taylor, I have something that I'd love to talk with you about. Sure, what is it? Can you ask my son to take a look at some of the messages I've sent him for me? Look, I apologized to the both of you, didn't I? I even handed back that duplicate key to him, and I promised to never get on to you about anything that I don't like ever again. So let's go back to how things were when you first entered my family and be happy together. Annalise, we told you the other day how the both of us feel right now about you, right? We said that we never want to have anything to do with you ever again. But I've learned a lot from what's happened. I think that I was just being a bit too aggressive with you about being my son's wife. A bit? No, actually, I was being very aggressive with you, wasn't I? I probably should have never thrown away your guys' cooking like that. And right now, I have a lot of regrets about all of that. Keeping our duplicate key after we asked for it back and entering our house over and over uninvited was also pretty unacceptable of you. And after putting a lot of trust in you at first by letting you watch our cat while we'd been on vacation, it's a shame to see all of that trust ruined. So what you did was not okay by any means. What's the worst to me, though, is that before handing that key back to us, you made another one of it. 
Well, I just thought that if anything happened at your guys' house, it would be good for me to be able to let myself in there. You entering the house without our permission is a huge problem. Hey, uh, Taylor, I'm telling you that I really have learned from all of this and will never do any of that again. So don't you think that going as far as cutting ties with me is harsh? Making a copy of the duplicate key so that you could still come into our house? And making comments about me and my cooking before throwing it out? And the last time you threw out your own son's cooking thinking it was mine? You had never actually been tasting any of that cooking from the start, had you? You just wanted to use the reason that I cooked the food as your reason for throwing it out. That's not what happened then. Before you were bragging a lot about your son, right? You said that your son could do anything and everything he cooked was always delicious. You threw away his delicious cooking, Annalise. Why would you do that if it was always supposed to taste good? Well, that last time, it didn't look all that appetizing. I'm finished here. I can see that no matter what I say to you, you have an excuse made up and ready to go. After what has happened between us this time, I no longer enjoy being around you. I think from now on, I'll only accept your husband as my in-law. Don't say such heartbreaking things. Both my husband and son have already torn into me about this, and they aren't choosing to listen to what I have to say anymore. My husband isn't even talking to me anymore now. And it's been weeks now where he doesn't listen or say anything to me. Well, that's all because of how messed up you were when you started to come into our house uninvited and criticize your sons and my cooking. I did hear one thing, though. Taylor, you're pregnant now, right? That is right, that I'm pregnant right now, but that has nothing to do with you. Well, Taylor, I was so worried about you because you focused so much on your job, and that's why I was always interested in the life that you and my son were making in that house. So I made that second duplicate key so that I could get into your house and check on you two. I just thought that if you started making better food, it would benefit the both of you and any kids you have. I did all of that to give you a little advice. Advice? How is calling my food garbage and throwing it away giving me any advice? I think I was just struggling to say the right things to you. Even after my husband and father-in-law tore you a new one, you still haven't learned any lessons, have you? I have! I have! And that's why I'm talking to you right now. This is all too strange. Because for the last while now, all I've heard coming out of your mouth are sad excuses for why you did such horrible things. I'm sorry about that. I want to apologize to you for being so rude recently. So please try and find a way to keep my son and yourself from throwing me away. I'd love to be able to meet my grandchild when they're born. And blaming everything on me like you guys are is too much. If you didn't want to be blamed for everything like you are now, then maybe you should have shut your mouth and been a responsible adult. We trusted you up until the point that you started entering our home without our permission. I was thinking that you and I could have become even closer then. However, you have shown us your true intentions from your actions and made it clear that you don't respect my husband and I. So I don't think I'm going to bother with you anymore. Is that so? Well, if that's the case, then I have something for you. After all of the apologies I've given to you, there has still been no forgiveness. So I'm thinking that you're the messed up one in all of this. So I'm going to make it my main goal to fix that awful attitude of yours before I pass away. We aren't going to be seeing one another anymore, so how are you going to fix my attitude? Could this mean that you made more than just one duplicate key that you're still holding on to? And what if I do have more? Do you have a problem with that? We changed our lock. Then I'll break in through your windows. You guys have a single-story house, so it's not hard for me to get in there. Stop that, Annalise. We already moved out of that house, so all you're going to be doing is getting into trouble with the law. Huh? You guys moved? Yes. We understand that you still knowing where our house was meant that there was a chance of you coming back. And we're going to be having our first baby here soon. So we'd like a place where we can focus on raising our baby with no outside distractions. Where did you guys move to? Are you brain dead, Annalise? Why would I tell you that? And don't bother your husband about it because he doesn't know the address either. And if you try to come to our house in any way, my husband is going to come to you and help you understand where the line is at. Taylor, I'm sorry. No matter what you try and say about things now, it's way too late. 
You even started saying that you'd go as far as breaking into our house through the window. At this point, even if you told me the best apology, I'm not going to let you near us. Well, uh, that was just because I thought I was getting into a pickle with you guys there. That wasn't meant to be anything serious. I don't think anyone would mention something like that after already entering someone's home uninvited on multiple occasions. Taylor, I promise that I'll never do anything to hurt you guys ever again. I won't even be a bother to you both anymore. So can you find it in your heart to allow me one more chance to be your mother-in-law? That chance was me replying to your texts today. I'm so sorry. I'm so freaking sorry. I know that you were always looked at so nicely by my husband and son, and that made me jealous to the point that I wanted to pick on you a little bit. So now you're just saying that all of those things you did to me and my husband were because you're a child? I get it. I was a real idiot back then when I did all of that. So please, find any way besides throwing me away to deal with me. I'm going to make sure from now on to change my heart and become the best mother-in-law ever. No matter what you say to me, you are not going to change the idea that you cemented in my mind of you. I'm throwing out the trash here. You had your last chance a second ago to tell me that all of this was because you're a child. But instead you wasted my time with all your crappy excuses. Well, your time is up now, and I need to make sure that my family never has to deal with you in the future. <coughs> After that, I never received any more calls or texts from Annalise. I think I made it very clear to her that my mind was not going to be changed, no matter what kinds of weak excuses she threw at me, and so I blocked her. I never thought that anyone would try and make more copies of a duplicate key to be able to enter someone's home whenever they pleased. And after the way she did that and proceeded to complain about me, I am in shock. But after having both my husband and hers team up on her to tell her just how horrible of a person she is, she started to slip from the position she once had as my mother-in-law and was worried about what would happen next to her. I really wanted things between her and I to work out since I never had a mother-in-law before, but now I think my days of worrying about becoming closer to her are over. She said that she thought that I'd be a good wife to her son at first, and that's why she let us get married, but to be honest, I don't think she ever thought that of me. I feel that if she would have just been honest to me about what she wanted instead of taking the worst path possible, then things would have never gotten this bad. But even now, my husband and father-in-law tell me that I don't have to change my ways for anyone's approval, besides my own, and that I'm an excellent wife. Right now, Annalise is very quiet and keeps to herself, while only doing chores around the house before settling down. Her husband is still being very distant from her and never talks to or listens to her, even when she begins to cry for him to listen. But by the age they are now, I feel he's right for not bothering with her, and it almost surprises me that he didn't leave her in general after what she'd done. I guess for now, she'd be best off just continuing to keep quiet like she has and doing all the chores and cooking for him. Now it's been a couple of months since we moved houses and I'm starting to go on my maternal leave from work. And with the free time I'll have now, I'm going to start getting myself prepared for having a baby and getting all the necessities. I'm never going to let Annalise meet with her grandchild when they're born, but I'll gladly take anything she gives me for the baby as long as she hands it to her husband to bring to me. Even though right now I'm primarily thinking about the baby and giving birth to it and all of that, I think down the road I might rethink things with Annalise. So hopefully by that point in the future, she has really grown up a bit and can show me and her family that she's ready to be a part of the family again. But enough of that kind of talk, as right now I'm only going to think about my husband and soon-to-be-born baby. And while I'm on the path to giving birth, I'll be thanking all of those that helped me along the way, and will do everything I can to do what I can. Sally, I'm on my way home right now. I just got on the train. You're pretty late today as well. Really? Oh, I thought I could come home earlier than yesterday, though. Yeah, but it's already after nine. Yeah, you're right. I guess I couldn't make it earlier. But I, because I'm usually even later than this, now nine actually feels kind of early to me. <laughs> I can see that. But you really have been working super late. Is everything okay? That's pretty hard, I have to admit, but there's nothing for me to do but get through it. I do really want to be able to go home earlier, though. This is a bit too much overtime for one person. It's almost every day now. Is work really that busy that you have to stay so late? Remember how I said my company is trying to expand into other fields? Well, because of that, there is a lot of work we have to do that we haven't done before. 
And everything is a bit of a mess since we're not used to this sort of thing. There's so much to do that even with all this overtime, we are making a dent. It's annoying to have to deal with the company's decisions. But I guess if they don't expand into different fields, then they might get left behind. I guess there's nothing to do about it. Yeah, there's not much I can say to them either. Or at least it won't do much good. But having to stay so late each day is really wearing on me. I would at least like to be home before Lisa goes to sleep. Sorry, but Lisa already went to bed. I put her to sleep about 10 minutes ago. Oh, damn, I didn't make it. I thought it was a little earlier today, so she would still be awake. Not being able to see her makes all this harder. You used to always come home by 7 and eat dinner with us too. Lisa also said that she misses you and wants to see you more. Really? She said that? Yeah, she did. She tried really hard to stay up today until you came home. But in the end, she couldn't do it and fell asleep on the couch. Oh, she's so cute. Just the image of that makes me feel like I can keep going with work no matter how bad it is. Is it bad? Apart from being busy, that is? You always used to say that work was fairly fun. This time, though, I got asked to do the thing I hate the most. What's that? I have to go on a business trip. Whoa, that is pretty rare. I know it's been almost three years since I last had to go. I really didn't want to go if I didn't have to. But I really couldn't say no to it. Yeah, it's not really up to you to choose what you do at work. So, when is it then? From next Friday until the following Monday. Oh, that's pretty long too. Yeah, I know. And I lose both my Saturday and Sunday. I'm not happy about that. Those are the days I can usually spend with Lisa. That's true. I'm sure Lisa will feel a little lonely. Yeah, I won't be able to play with her all week. I hope she doesn't get too sulky. I'm sure she won't do that. She's already in grade school, so she's old enough to understand that some things can't be helped. Plus, I can do something with her instead. She probably won't be upset as you might think. Something about that makes you a little upset. <laughs> it's better than her being sulky though, isn't it? It's good for me and her to do something together with just the two girls. And there's something we can do that we never can when you're around. What? What's that? Why can't you do it I'm around? Go and eat some fast food for dinner. You hate junk food, right? So we can never really go and get it. But if it's Lisa and me, then we can go from time to time. And then it means I don't have to clean up afterwards. So it's easy for me. <laughs> That's true. Eating out is always good. I want to go out with you guys too, though. It's good for you to let your hair down on your own sometimes, too. I know I do it. You should enjoy your business trip. You haven't been on one in a while. Did you see the weather, Wolf? No, I didn't. Why? It looks like there's a storm coming and tomorrow's gonna be rainy really strong. Oh, but you have to leave for your trip tomorrow. You're pretty unlucky, aren't you? <laughs> Tell me about it. And it makes me want to go even less now. Traveling in the rain can be a real pain, and you have more stuff than normal since it's a longer trip. I know, right? It's so annoying to have to move around in the rain and through puddles. I thought I was suppressed about going before, but now it's even worse. It doesn't change that much whether it's a rainy day or a clear one. Plus, once you get to the airport, it won't matter too much. Maybe there will be a bit of turbulence, but that's it. But even getting there is annoying. Then why not catch a cab? Then you can just sit back and go straight from here. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I'm just complaining because I don't want to go. I really wish I'd sent someone else. I know how you feel, but if you keep complaining about it, it will just make things worse. Why not try view this a bit of a fun trip and try to enjoy it? You're right, I should. I'll do my best to be more <laughs> positive about it. Okay, do your best. Did you get all your stuff back already? Yeah, for the most part. I have to be up at one after all. Okay, got it. Should I wake up with you and make you some breakfast? Nah, don't worry about it. I'll just get something to eat from the airport. Take your time and sleep in tomorrow. Thanks, but I'll try to wake up if I can. <coughs> Alice, what are you doing right now? Oh, did you arrive already? Sorry that I couldn't wake up in the morning. I tried, but in the end, just couldn't do it. I don't care about that. What are you doing? Where are you? What? I'm with Lisa at a friend's house. Today it was raining, so we couldn't take them to the park. We thought the kids would be bored inside all day, so we thought we could let them play together. Really? Yeah, really. What is this all of a sudden? Are you really that interested in what we're doing? Yeah, I am. Come on, you just arrived for your business trip, and you have to be there till midweek. I'm worried about it because you're lying to me. You know our friend's house right now, are you? What? What are you talking about? 
Why would I lie about something like that? I really am at a friend's house. And Lisa is also having fun playing here. Lisa was completely drenched here outside of the house. And she was alone. Where the hell are you right now? What? She's soaked through? When she woke up and couldn't find you, she ran around looking for you apparently. And then she sat outside the front door, waiting for you to come home. Wait a second. What do you mean she was outside the house? Are you with her right now? Aren't you supposed to be on your business trip? I'm at home right now. What? Why? What happened to your trip? It got cancelled. The rain was getting so bad that the flights were grounded and then eventually cancelled. I got a call from work while I was waiting at the airport and they told me that it had been called off. What? Then why didn't you tell me that earlier? I thought I would come home and surprise you and Lisa, but I was the one who was surprised when I got home. You weren't there. And Lisa was soaking waiting outside. So that's what happened? Yeah. So, what are you doing that was important enough to leave Lisa all alone? Oh, sorry. I actually just went out to do some shopping. Then why'd you lie to me before? That isn't something that you need to hide from me. Well, I thought you might get upset if you knew I left Lisa at home alone. So I just made up that story to kind of cover my tracks. Sorry about that. Huh? What the hell is that supposed to mean? If you can't think of anything good, then just don't bother with the stupid excuses. It's not an excuse. Then why is the car still in the driveway? You always take the car when you go to the store. Plus, in this rain? It's even more of a reason to take the car. It's because of the rain that I didn't take it. The visibility is low and it's dangerous to drive in weather like this. That's why I didn't drive. There's no one stupid enough to walk to the store for some groceries in this kind of rain. Plus, it seems like you're in quite a hurry to leave the house. There's a bunch of makeup thrown around the table. You almost never wear makeup, but you're telling me that you made yourself up to go to the grocery store? Even I like to do my makeup every now and then. And then your favorite dress is also missing from the closet. You know? The one you said that you only want to wear on special occasions. Where'd you go wearing that? Because it definitely wasn't to Walmart. You even looked inside the closet? Oh, cut it out already! I don't know what you're suspecting me of, but stop the random searches. But it's all pretty strange, don't you think? You're not cheating or something, are you? Of course I'm not. Why would you even say that? Anyone would be suspicious in these circumstances. But it's not the cheating that I'm most angry about. How could you leave Lisa all alone in weather this bad? There was even a tornado warning. I just went to the store to buy some things and was planning to be back soon. I thought it would be okay to leave her for just a while. I never thought that she might go outside to look for me. She was worried that something might have happened to you. Lisa ran down the street looking for you. She didn't just go outside. She ran down the street too. Do you even know how bad it is? Some areas are close to flooding even. It's not safe for a little kid to be outside by herself in weather like this. Seriously, what were you thinking? But I left her a note saying that I would be back soon. I thought she would be okay to be at home and would just wait inside. Really, did you? Well, she probably didn't notice. Or maybe she was still worried even with the note. She's still little, so you never know what she might do. But since she's home now, it means that she's fine, right? No, she isn't. What happened? She was out in the rain for so long that she isn't feeling well. And her feet are all scratched up because she ran out barefoot. Is she okay, though? I took her to the emergency room quickly and we just got back. But they said that some bacteria might have gotten into the scratches and there is a chance that she might get an infection. Think about how dirty the water filling up in the streets must be. They kept her in the hospital for a few hours, but then told me to take her home and let her rest there. At least she got looked after. Thank God for that. Do you even understand what you've done? She's lucky to get away with just a fever and some cuts, but who knows what could have happened? You have no right to call yourself a parent. I'm sorry, I never thought that something like this would have just happened. I realized I did something really stupid this time. Anyway, I'll be home as soon as I can. Don't bother coming back here. I don't want to see your face at all. Ben, I can't breathe properly. You need to help me. I don't care. I'm busy looking after Lisa right now. The poor thing. She has a fever of over 100 degrees. I have a fever even worse than that. Plus I'm coughing a lot and it's getting worse and worse. You know that I have asthma. So these things affect me really hard. If it gets any worse than this, I'll probably get pneumonia. 
Really? Sounds pretty bad then. Don't be so cold. This is your fault that this happened. You should care a little more. My fault? What's my fault? You didn't let me into the house yesterday. I was waiting out there in the rain for ages and ages, but you still didn't open the door. That's why I got sick. I told you not to come back here. I told you that I didn't want to see your face. But there was a storm outside. How could you leave me out there? It's because I confirmed that you really were cheating and I couldn't forgive you for that. I'm not doing that. I told you that yesterday too. I found the bag that you were hiding in the back of the closet. It was full of lingerie and a hotel member's card. How are you going to explain that? I've never seen any of those things in my life. That stuff? It's just a bag that I'm keeping for a friend. And which friend would that be? I can't tell you that. It would be embarrassing for her. So then, you can't clear up my doubts. Should I ask around to your friends and see if you're telling the truth? Don't do that. And stop piling up the stupid lies one on top of the other. It's just going to make me angrier and angrier. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm sorry for cheating. Oh, so you admit it. Seriously, you cut it out with these stupid excuses. They're not believable and they just annoy me more. I'm sorry that I lied to you too, but I never thought that it would turn into this huge thing. And what happened to Lisa too? I never wanted that to happen. If you had done that on purpose, then I would have slapped you. But even if you didn't plan for it to happen, it doesn't mean I have to forgive you. You left her all alone and this is what happened because of it. But she's fine in the end, right? Sure, she got a fever, but that's all that ended up happening. You can just stay wherever you are and suffer on your own. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Wait a second. I think if I stay like this, then something bad really might happen. My fever is insanely high right now, and I can't stop coughing. And so what? I probably got pneumonia at this point. You might not know, but pneumonia can be really dangerous. I do know that. One of my grandmothers passed from it. And I'm in that situation right now. Please come pick me up and take me to the hospital. Who would go do that? You're an adult, so take yourself there. I'm begging you. I'm at the hotel near the station. What are you doing in a place like that on your own? Why not go to your lover's house and have him look after you? Or maybe did he decide to break things off? I can go to his house. He's also married. Oh, double cheating, is it? <laughs> I feel bad for his wife, too. I really think that what I did was horrible to you. And that goes for Lisa as well. But could you just put that aside for now and help me? I think if I don't see a doctor soon, things will get really bad. Fine. Tell me the address of the hotel. Thank you so much. You'll come, right? No, I'm not coming. I'll just call an ambulance for you to the hotel. How can you be so cruel? Don't you care what happens to me? I help you right now because you're ill. That's why I'm calling you an ambulance. But I don't have the compassion to do any more for you than that. Don't you think I've been punished enough already? Look at the state that I'm in. You can't be saying that seriously, right? Lisa didn't do anything wrong and look what happened to her. Your punishment is going to be from here on out. What punishment? You're going to lose your family and the house you live in. You're going to move out and I'll have you pay child support for Lisa. Of course, I'm going to get primary custody of her. You mean you're going to divorce me? Of course I am. I don't want that. I will never cheat on you again. I'll do anything, but please forgive me. What use will anything you do have? It doesn't matter what you do. You hurt our daughter, and I will never forgive you for that. You can cry and apologize all you like. You can try and make me feel sorry for you, but it will do nothing. The only thing you can do for us now is to just disappear from our sight. <laughs> After that, Sally made her own way to the hospital without needing an ambulance. It turns out that she was pretty close to developing pneumonia. In the end, she had to stay at the hospital for a few days after she came in. I went to visit her while she was in there one time, but it wasn't to check on her or see how she was doing. Instead, it was to talk to her about the divorce. Due to what she felt was my cold attitude, she broke down crying in the hospital bed, but I didn't relent or change my mind. I talked to her politely and businesslike, but not kindly, and in the end, she finally signed the papers for me. I also found out who she'd been cheating on me with and told his wife about what had been going on. Later, I found out that this was not the first time that Sally had left Lisa at home by herself so that she could go out and cheat. Thanks to that, I was able to win the custody rights for Lisa, and there weren't complaints from any other family members. Even Sally's parents didn't say anything against it. They fully understood why I did what I did. 
Three days after everything happened, Lisa's fever finally went down and she is now as healthy as ever. I'm incredibly grateful that she is fine and nothing serious came of this. I know well that it could have been much worse. From now on, I will do my best to make sure that Lisa doesn't have to experience anything like that ever again and to raise her with all the love I can as her father. Hi, Haley. Uh, do you prefer red or white wine today? Uh, tell me and I'll pick some up. Whoa, someone's in a good mood. What's the occasion, Jacob? I thought you were out for drinks with your co-workers tonight. Is it over? Yes, it is. I'm already at the liquor shop in town to pick up some wine for you now. So, red or white? Hmm, I don't know, though. I have so much to do tomorrow morning. I couldn't finish cleaning today and I have to do laundry. Should I even have a drink? I don't want to be hung over while doing all the chores. You don't have to worry about the chores. I'm off tomorrow, so let me take care of it. So you can have as much as you want tonight. Really? Are you sure? What's gotten into you? <laughs> Are you trying to butter me up because you want something from me? No, I just think you deserve to sit down and enjoy the evening over some good wine. And I'm also trying to show you my appreciation. Uh, I've been inspired by my co-workers. We were talking about how we should appreciate our wives more. Ah, I see. What led you guys to talk about that, though? Did someone do something? <laughs> no, nothing in particular. You know, it was just the flow of the conversation. We were just talking about each other's families. Wow, I didn't know you boys had that kind of deep talk. It's nothing deep. I just, it just happened, it just happened to be a topic tonight. You know what I mean, Haley. Stop teasing me. <laughs> All right. So you wanted to give me some chill time? Yeah, I, I thought you might enjoy it. I know you like to have some wine from time to time, but since we had Dylan, I know you haven't been able to drink much. You've been nursing him less, especially at night, so I thought maybe it's okay for you to enjoy some wine like you used to before kids. Yeah, I, I think I am done breastfeeding him. He has stopped asking for it, especially since he doesn't wake up at night now. It's been so long since I've had any kind of alcohol, it didn't even cross my mind that I could drink now. So, sure, why not? Especially if you'll do the housework tomorrow morning. Will, you deserve it. I know you barely have time to relax taking care of two kids while I'm not home. And on top of that, you take care of all the housework every day. I really do appreciate all that you do for us. So you should spread your wings out tonight and relax. I'm just doing what any stay-at-home mom would do. You don't have to be so dramatic about it. <laughs> well, I'm just saying I don't take what you do for granted. You've been a great mom and wife. I'm thankful and I want to show you my appreciation by doing something for you. Aw, thank you, honey. I am so touched. You're going to make me cry. It means a lot for you to say that. It pushes me to be even better. I realize I don't say these things too often to you because I'm a shy guy, but I do know our family wouldn't be as happy as if it wasn't for everything that you do. So, like I said, let me handle everything tomorrow morning and you just chill as much as you want tonight. Thank you. Okay then, can you pick up a bottle of white wine? I'll enjoy a couple of glasses and sleep in tomorrow morning. Don't get too wasted, though. I don't want you to regret anything later. You can, for sure. I know, I know. I won't drink like I'm in my early 20s. I'll be responsible. But I'm still counting on you waking up early tomorrow. Oh, but don't expect me to get an A-plus on all the chores. It's just me, not the ultimate housekeeper. I can't do any of the chores as good as you do. It's okay. Just give it your best. Besides, I'm never perfect at anything either. I'm sure Izzy will help you out, though. You know, she's been really cute lately, saying she's old enough to do this and that. She's been quite helpful with the chores. How cute of her. She must have developed a sense of responsibility since she's becoming a big sister. I'm so proud of her. Having a baby brother at home is one reason for sure, but also since she started second grade, she's become very mature probably because she has more interactions with children from the lower grades. In other words, she's become a bit bossy. <laughs> I think it's a good thing that she has learned to be mindful of smaller children. And I adore that she is bossy. <laughs> I will let her take the lead tomorrow then. It just satisfy the both of us, right? Yes, for sure. She'll be over the moon. All right. I'm on my way home now. Okay, be careful.
I look forward to seeing you and my wine. Hey, Haley, we'll be on our way home soon. Do you have anything else you'd like me to pick up? No, I'm good. Thanks for asking. How is Izzy? Is she being good? She's been really great. I didn't know where to find some of the stuff on the list, but Izzy knew exactly where they were. She was like, oh, that's in aisle three. Follow me. It was really helpful and very funny. I'm glad you guys had fun. Did you find everything you needed to cook me dinner? I'm so excited for my surprise. I don't know if it'll come out any good, but I'll do my best. Hey, sorry to change the topic, but has Izzy talked to you about piano lessons? Piano? No, I don't think so. What about it? She just told me while we were shopping. She wants to learn how to play the piano. Really? She hasn't mentioned anything about it to me. I didn't think she was interested in music. She's become interested because her friends from school are taking piano lessons. And one of the teachers let her play with the piano in music class. She like she enjoyed it very much. So she asked me if she could start taking lessons. Is that so? Well, it's the first time I've heard of it. Are you sure she means it? Uh, like she could be a spur of the moment, don't you think? I think she means it, but... What is it? It's kind of odd. Because she's saying that you'd say no. That's apparently why she's told me and not you. I told her you wouldn't say such a thing for no reason. I don't know where she got that idea. Well, it's a no. What? What is? She can't take piano lessons. We can't afford it. Do you know how expensive it is to learn music? Can't afford it? Haley, what are you talking about? Of course we can. You don't know anything about our finances. You earn it, but I handle paying the bills and everything. I know exactly where we stand, and I'm telling you, we can't afford it. I'm not questioning your ability to manage our money, but are you sure? Because it's hard to believe that my salary is not enough to afford a child with a piano lesson. Well, you are wrong. You don't know how expensive it is to raise two children. Cost of living has risen so much in the past few years, I've been shopping at discount stores lately to save as much as possible. Your pay may not be low, but that doesn't mean we're wealthy. Letting her learn piano is a completely different story. Haley, I just checked a minute ago. The cost is between 100 bucks to 200 bucks a month if she takes a class every week. It's not cheap, but it's not something I can't pay for. There has to be a way we can let her take lessons. Spending an extra hundred bucks is not acceptable. Have you been following? I am telling you, I've been shopping at discount stores. Why do you think I would go an extra mile to shop there? Because we're tight on money. Okay, okay. What if I pay for my personal account? Why would you do that? You said that lunch around your office is so expensive that if you go out with colleagues too much, you wouldn't have much left a month. I did say that, but I don't mean that to the extent that where I can't even pay for my daughter's piano lessons. I mean, a hundred bucks or two? Don't you think letting her do what interests her is worth the money? No, I don't think so. And it's not fair to you. And I don't want to feel like I owe you. What? Come on, honey. I don't think that's fair. In fact, it bothers me more that I can't even pay for what my daughter wants to do. You know... I think it took her courage to speak up, so I don't want to let her down. It's not only about the money. If she starts to take lessons, someone has to take her to every time. That's true. She is way too young to go on her own. She is. So you see, it's not possible. I have all the housework and a baby to take care of. Do you know how busy I am after she comes home from school? Preparing dinner, helping her with housework, bathing two children, it's impossible. But you were taking her in a car, right? Not by foot or anything? It'd only take a few minutes then. I'm sure there's a way to work things out. Only a few minutes? You can freely suggest these things because you don't do anything at home. You are so irresponsible. You are not considering how much burden it would put on me to squeeze in some stupid piano lessons, which she probably won't even take seriously. I am telling you, it's not happening. Hey, calm down. I know you do a lot for the family. What if we ask my mom to take her then? She lives close enough and she's always asking if there's anything she could do to help us out. If we ask her, I'm sure she won't say no. You want to bring your mother into this petty issue? 
Jacob, please don't do anything to embarrass me. I don't want her to think I can't handle raising these children. I wouldn't be able to look her in the eyes from the shame. Besides, she's old. You want to use your elderly mother to drive Izzy back and forth? Haley, seriously, you are overreacting. My mom knows how busy you are. Enough, Jacob. We are done with this conversation. I am in charge of taking care of the children. So if I say no, it means no. I will talk to Izzy myself and explain to her why she can't take the lessons. What are you going to tell her? Are you going to make her give up? She won't even understand anything about finances. She's too young for that. I wish you would stop being so easy on her. All you do is kiss her ass and give her whatever she wants. I'm the one who has to deal with the aftermath, you know? She screams at me saying she hates me because I have to stop her from doing as she pleases. Do you know how draining that is? It's not fair. Haley, you were changing the subject. No, I'm not. This is totally related. You don't even realize it because you only do whatever you want to with the kids. I am left with all the tasks that are harder or involve them screaming at me. I don't exactly prefer it, you know? All right, all right. I'm sorry. But will you take a closer look at your daily agenda, please? There has to be some time she could take lessons. This is the first time she has ever raised her hand like this. This is Izzy growing up, Haley. You know it, right? We should try to answer to her feelings as much as possible. Yeah, but... Just take a closer look, please. Think about it for a day or two. I understand this is just another burden for you. But we shouldn't ignore Izzy's feelings. Please, Haley. I'm begging you as Izzy's father. Are you done with work? Hi, sweetie. I'm almost done, but still at work. But I'm happy that you messaged me. Are you sending this on the tablet? Have you done your homework already? It's almost bedtime for you, princess. I'm done with homework. But I don't think I can go to bed. I'm not sleepy. I see. But you should get into bed anyway when it's time. I don't want you to be sleepy at school tomorrow. I know, Daddy. But that's not why I messaged you. There's something wrong with Dylan. What do you mean? What's the matter? He doesn't look well. He looks very pale. And he's not moving very much. What? Since when? I don't really know. I just saw him a minute ago before I messaged you. Should I do something about it? Do you think Dylan is just sleeping? You need to tell your mom now. Tell her she needs to take him to the hospital right away. But, Daddy... Mommy's not home. She left in the morning and hasn't been back since. That's why I messaged you. Because I didn't know what to do. She hasn't been back? How do you know she's been out since the morning? You had school today, didn't you? You wouldn't have an idea when she left? I've been home all day. She told me I had to stay home to watch Dylan because Mommy had important work and had to go somewhere. So it's just been us two all day. She left you to watch over Dylan? You're joking, right? Uh, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Mommy's made me babysit Dylan a couple of times now, so I'm used to it. Daddy, what should I do about Dylan? Is he going to be okay? Daddy, are you there? Sorry, I'm here. I'm just shocked to hear that your mother has left you two on your own. You have to tell me what I should do. Dylan looks uncomfortable. It's all right, dear. I'm on my way home right now. I'll be there in no time. Really? You'll come home? Of course. But it's going to take 30 minutes to get back. I'm going to call Miss Smith from next door to check on Dylan in case he needs an ambulance. Will you open the door for her when she arrives and show her where Dylan is? Okay. What else? Should I be doing something else to help him? Stay by his side and keep an eye on him. Try to stay quiet so that you don't surprise him. When Mr. Smith arrives, do as she says. If she needs you to do something, you listen to her, okay? You can do this, right? You're a big girl now. Yes, I am Dylan's big sister. I can do it. All right, let me get a hold of Miss Smith now. Don't worry, I'm on my way.
Haley, you need to reply as soon as you see this message. Hi, honey. Sorry, I didn't notice your call. I'm at the grocery store to pick up some stuff I needed urgently. That's it? You just didn't notice? It, do you know what time it is now? Where the hell are you? Why aren't you at home with the kids? Oh, I thought you were going to be late tonight. Are you already home? The hell I am. Oh, I see. Sorry, Jacob, I, I shouldn't have left without the kids. I figured it would be all right since Dylan's asleep. But, and I knew what I was getting, so I would have gotten back in 15 minutes. Izzy said she would be okay, so I kind of depended on her. But it was irresponsible of me. I'm sorry. You knew what you were getting, huh? Well, how come you haven't been home all day? How far did you have to go to get this item? What? What are you talking about? I haven't been out all day. You're overreacting. It's been less than 10 minutes since I've left the house. If you're going to lie to me, you should have prepared a better one. You think I don't know anything? Don't underestimate me or your daughter. Jacob, I don't know what you're talking about. You're scaring me. I'm scaring you? Give me a break. You were scaring me. You left Izzy with Dylan today. You actually made her stay home instead of going to school so she could watch Dylan for you. Are you out of your mind? Why the hell would you leave an eight-year-old with a baby? What? Who gave you that story? Why would I do anything like that? Izzy told me herself, and I fully believe my daughter. Especially since you're not home right now. Jacob, let's be realistic. Izzy is only eight years old. She can be dramatic sometimes. And in case you didn't know, that's what eight-year-old girls do. They lie and make up stories all the time, especially if there's something that's bugging them. Are you serious? You were okay with calling your own daughter a liar to get away from what you have done? I'm in disbelief right now. I'm so ashamed of you. I never thought you would do such a thing. So you won't believe me, huh? What a cruel husband you are. Why are you putting this all on me in the first place? You have no right to lecture me. What? Yeah, I made up some stupid excuses, and I guess it was wrong of me to leave the kids on their own, but... You can't tell me this is all my fault. You haven't even been around. So you want to be defiant now? You abandon your children. Not for a couple of minutes, but all day. You risked Izzy and Dylan's safety. Do you not see what you've done? I can report you to the police right now. I said I'm sorry, all right? But don't you think Izzy is old enough to take care of herself? She's eight years old. She's almost in her teens. No, I do not think she's old enough. Besides, this is not even about Izzy's age. I don't think you realize the seriousness of what you've done. I don't think you realize the seriousness of my situation. I take care of Dylan 24-7 without a break. Do you know how hard that is? It's inevitable that I feel I need time off. I did what I had to do to maintain myself. Damn it, Haley. Listen to yourself. You think taking a break is good enough excuse to abandon them at home? Dylan was taken to the hospital in exchange for it, you know? Are you alright with that? What? What are you talking about? I said Dylan was taken to the hospital. While you were out maintaining yourself, Dylan became sick. Guess how I found out? It was Izzy. She messaged me on her tablet. She was so scared and didn't know what to do. So I called Mrs. Smith to come over and check on Dylan while I rushed back. Is he all right? God, Haley, stop it. Don't pretend like you were suddenly worried about your son. It's really gross. Excuse me? Of course I'm worried about my son. I'm not pretending. I'm his mother. Stop fooling around and tell me he's okay. If you were seriously concerned for your kids, you never would have left them in the first place. Or are you actually stupid enough to believe that nothing would happen? That I would never find out? Well, Haley, you are a serious fool if you believe that is what happened. Whatever, Jacob. I still need you to tell me how he's doing. Is he still at the hospital? If he is, then tell me which hospital he's at. I'm coming right away. You know he needs me. As hard as it is to believe you were his real mom, you are. Unfortunately, so for old time's sake, I will tell you, he's fine. Nothing serious. So in regards to his health, you have nothing to worry about. Where is he? Which hospital was he taken to? I'm not telling you because you don't need to know. You will not be seeing the kids again. 
then I'm divorcing you right away. I do not want you anywhere near my children, so I am not giving away the kids' whereabouts. What? You are joking, right? Where is all this coming from? Cut it out, Jacob, now. I will not accept any of that. It doesn't matter what you accept or don't accept. The court will decide whether you need to or not in the end. But as far as I see it, you're not eligible to be Izzy and Dylan's mother. You put them in danger. And now that I know who you really are, I refuse to stay married to you. You have crossed the line, Haley. Staying as family will do no good to anyone. You think you can take care of them? Who's been taking care of them all this time? Not you. It has been me and me only. All you cared about was work. You can't suddenly act like you're the big guy. Who the hell do you think you are? Don't make me laugh. You make it sound like you've been around. Guess what? Your own daughter told me where you've been going lately. You've been going out to play poker at the casino, haven't you? That's why you kept saying we didn't have enough money. Because you've been spending what I earned for the family on gambling. Unbelievable, Haley. Just unbelievable. Uh, no, you got it wrong. I've never been to the casino or have played poker before. Besides, Izzy is not old enough to understand any of this. Uh, this is just a misunderstanding. Or maybe she's just being rebellious and making up stories. She's probably just trying to get back at me for not letting her take piano lessons. You're right. She might not understand what kind of place the casino is, but she knew that you have been there to play cards. You've been calling the casino to reserve yourself a spot at the table. You didn't even care that she heard you make those calls, did you? Well, let me tell you, you have underestimated your daughter. Izzy is much smarter than you think. But, listen, Jacob, yes, I, I have been to the casino to have a good time. It was only a couple of times, though. I never even used that much money. Not that much money? Seriously? I just checked her joint account. Where's all the money I transferred every month? Why is there nothing left in the account? The only truth you have told me was that we don't have much money. But that is because of you. No wonder you didn't want to pay for her piano lessons. Hey, why did you check our account? We agreed that I am in charge of handling our finances. How did you even know the login password? You're not supposed to know. You saved your login information on the computer, dummy. What a huge mistake on my end to let you handle my money. You have been irresponsible with our children and our money. This is a nightmare. Just to be clear, I am looking for ways to get that money back from you. Not only have you put my children in danger, but you also used up the money that was supposed to be used for their education. Don't think you're getting away with this. I'm coming after you, so you better be ready. Shortly after, I officially filed for divorce from my wife. Because she has spent money that would have belonged to both of us, and because she has spent it on gambling, the court ordered her to pay me back what would have been my share. It wasn't the entire amount she had used, but I am satisfied with the result, and, and that I got some payback from her. Despite what she had done to the children, Haley still fought for their custody. Since Haley has been the main caretaker of the children while I was busy working, it was true that she had much more hands-on experience raising Izzy and Dylan. However, the court saw the seriousness of Haley's neglect and ruled that I take sole custody of my children. Since the divorce, I have been taking care of Izzy and Dylan as a single father. As hard as it is, spending more time with them has been great and I feel that I have learned a lot about them. The kids have been through a sad experience with their mother. I will do my best to support them as their only parent and, and keep them away from any more harm. Hey, Max, are you there? I just wanted to let you know that I'm about to head out to work for the day. And also that apparently the night shift people all called out, so I'll be staying late to cover their shift. Oh dang, again? That's at least a few times just this week, isn't it? Well, I don't like having to do either, you know? But there is no one else who will be able to man the store, so I don't have a choice. I know, but it seems like you're always doing this for others, but no one ever does it for you. What would happen if you said no and didn't cover the shifts? I've really thought about doing that before, you know? But we're all a team here, and I feel if I don't cover people's shifts like this, then no one will cover mine when I have to call out suddenly. I get that. I just feel like it's been happening a lot lately is all. 
I don't think you're wrong about that. But we just hire so many students at my place, and they're always busy with this or that. Oh, I see. Well, I guess that makes sense then. They probably have some assignments to turn in or something. That's what I like to tell myself too, Max. Besides, I also hope that by doing this for them now, they'll understand about working with the team in any future jobs they might have. <laughs> well, yes. It would be nice if that were the case. <laughs> but okay, if that's what's happening, I don't mind cooking tonight. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to eat? Oh, I don't think you're going to need to cook for me. The chef here said he was going to make me something special since I've been coming in so frequently. Oh, gotcha. Well, isn't that nice? I guess I'll just scrounge something up for me to eat around here then. Yeah, sorry about all this, but thanks for understanding. Also, there was something else that I wanted to talk to you about if it's alright. My mother has really not been feeling well lately, and starting from tomorrow, I'm going to need to start visiting her more often. Oh wow, that's a lot. I'm sorry, Dawn. Does everything look like it's going to be okay? Has she gone to see a doctor or anything like that? I think that it's just a bit of a heat flash since the summer has been so hot. Apparently, she was out doing yard work all by herself in the sun yesterday and started to complain of muscle soreness. I guess my mom just hasn't figured it out that she needs to slow things and so her body was letting her know. Well, I'm sure that she'll be really happy to see you. Besides, it isn't like she even lives that far, so she probably just wants someone she knows she can call on. I think you're right, yeah. But my dad is also still there with her, so that's good to know. And he's really going to have to step up now that mom is slowing down. He won't be able to count on her for all that he used to. That's very true. I didn't want to say anything, but it did seem like your mom tended to do everything for him. I'm sure you and your dad will have to have a lot of talks about this. Yeah, it seems like we really are. But it's just so odd to me because I still feel like my parents are young and healthy. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a very good child. Well, you know that you can talk to me about anything that might be bothering you, too. And I don't think you're a bad child. I mean, I barely even call my parents. But how about next time you go to see your mom, I go along with you, so I can at least say hi to them. Are you sure that'd be okay? I know that my parents would just love to see you. And I really do want to try and something more for them. It's part of why I got the job and started saving up. And I think that just proves that you're not as bad a daughter as you thought you were. You work really hard, and all while thinking of how you can give to your family and never complaining about it. I think you're making me sound just a bit better than I really am. I mean, I complain about a lot of things. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe I was wrong about the last one. I have heard you complain a lot. But not about anything unreasonable, just about how much you've had to cover for other people. Yeah, but at least this way I'm able to earn more money since I'm working so many hours. And my boss is always coming in to help when I've had to pick up shifts, so he makes the extra work not as bad at least. Oh, well that's good to hear. This is a new manager, right? I remember you seemed to think the last guy was really strict. Well, that's because he was. Compared to working under him, this new guy is like a dream. Anyways, I have to get ready to leave the house now. I was going to do some errands before my shift. Got it. Well, I'm sad I won't get to see much of you tonight, but I hope that work goes well. Thanks, Max. I hope the rest of your shift goes quickly as well. I'll let you know once I finish and I'm heading home. Hey, Dawn. Are you still not heading home yet? Were you working late tonight again? I can't recall. Oh, Max, sorry. I forgot to tell you, but I'm at my parents' house right now. Oh, is that where you are? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought I was going to be back at home before you were, but we just lost track of time talking. Don't worry about it. I'm glad that you ended up spending so much time with them. And how is your mom feeling? Has she been doing any better since we last talked about her? Yeah, she's actually feeling a lot better already. In fact, one of the things we were talking about were plans to go on a trip together. You're going to go somewhere with your mom? Well, you remember when I said that I was saving money to spend on my parents, right? I mentioned that to them and asked my mom if there was anything she really wanted, and she said that she wanted to take a trip somewhere. Wow! Well, that sounds really exciting! 
So are all three of you going to go? That was the original plan, but then my dad said that he wasn't going to be able to make it. Oh, well that's too bad. But still, a trip with just you and your mom sounds great. Yes, it will be a really nice girls trip where we can relax and take things easy. She even says she'd be willing to put in some of her own money into this trip if we needed to. Gotcha. But I still can't help but feel bad for your dad. I'm sure that he would have loved to go. I think it was kind of his way of giving this trip to my mom too. I mean, after all she's done for him over the years, there has probably only been a few days worth of actual time she's had to herself. So I think that's why he's just letting mom and I go on this trip. But are you going to be okay if I leave for a little bit? We're only going to be gone a week. Of course you should go on this trip. I mean, this is basically what you've been saving up for this whole time. I'll take care of things at home, so you just focus on having fun and being with your mom. Thank you so much. We were thinking of going somewhere overseas, maybe Milan. Well, that sounds great, but do you even know how to speak Italian? You might want to try going somewhere they speak a bit more English, no? I know, but where is that? England? Canada? Well, it's your trip, and I'm sure you two will pick the place that's right for you both. Oh, and by the way, are you going to need dinner, or did you already eat? I was hoping to eat something at home with you, if that's alright. Yeah, no problem. I'll get started on something right now. Thank you so much, Max. You've been so patient with all my running around. I know that I've been asking a lot of you recently, and I'm glad you've been there for me. Well, I just felt so awful when your mom got sick after you were already working yourself so much with your job. You have nothing to worry about as far as I'm concerned. Although sometimes I do feel like I do most of the housework. I'm sorry about that, Max. I promise to try and get home a little earlier to help out more. <laughs> Don't overdo it. But a little more help with things would be nice. Of course. Anyways, I should be getting home in about 30 minutes. See you soon. Hey, Dawn. Are you already gone for your trip? I don't remember if you ever told me just where it was that you were going. And how come your phone battery appears to be off? Anyways, would you mind getting back to me when you see these messages? Things are a real mess here, so just please give me a call as soon as you can, okay? Anytime. I'll be here by my phone ready to talk to you, okay? Max, I'm so sorry for getting back to you so late. I got here and had no idea how to get service for my phone. Then my phone died because my charger doesn't work here, so I spent a few days without any battery. But now I can see that you sent a bunch of messages to me today. What happened? You seem to be really worried about something. It's too late. It's already over. What do you mean? What's over? I take it that you're still not back in the US, right? Yeah, but I'm at the airport right now and connected to the Wi-Fi. Plus, I managed to find a converter for my phone charger. But anyways, I'm about to get on the plan home. And the trip was really great. Mom and I had such a blast together. I'm sorry, but just who did you go on that trip with? Because your mom passed away, and we just finished her funeral. Wait, what? What do you mean? My mom is dead, but she can't be. Do you really think that I would lie to you about something like this, Dawn? You know that I would never do something like that. I know you wouldn't, but... I'm coming home from a trip with her. I don't understand. Dawn, please. I know that's a lie. So just drop it. I've already been on the phone with your dad, and we've talked about this. But I don't get it. Why is my mom dead? What happened? Apparently she collapsed while she was outside and she hit her head. No, this can't be happening. I'm sorry, but it's the truth, Dawn. I don't get it. No, I refuse to accept this. Why didn't you tell me that my mom had died in your messages? It would have at least been good to know what happened before we had this conversation. When I first got the call from your dad, I didn't know what to think. The whole reason I was calling you so much was because I thought you were going on a trip with your mom. But how could it happen like this? I couldn't even say goodbye. I don't really think that you get to feel sorry for yourself right now. You were the one who lied about taking this trip with your mom, and all of that so you could go out and cheat on me. Wait, what do you mean by that? Dawn, enough. I know about it all, okay? 
Here I thought you were really worried about being a good daughter for nothing. You were right the first time. You are a bad one. We're cremating your mom soon, so make sure you apologize to her when you come home. Mom, I'm so sorry for everything. Everyone here just can't believe what you've done, Dawn. I'm an idiot. I'm the worst. I can't believe this happened. I agree. In fact, when you get back, I want a divorce. You also have until the end of the month to pack all of your things and move out of this house. I've already told the leasing company that we're canceling the lease. Wait, Max, this is all so sudden. Well, you better hurry up and accept what's happened. Once we finish with your mom at the crematorium, I'm going home to pack up my things. Let me know when you've landed, and I'll go to pick you up with the divorce papers. Max, after work, can you please come home to me? Have you signed the divorce papers like I've asked you to? I haven't yet, but still. I never want to see you again until those papers are signed. Now you're holding up the process, so just sign the papers and let's be done with this. But I don't want to get a divorce from you. And just who do you think you are to get to say that? I mean, you went on a trip to cheat on me with your boss! I know, and it was really, really stupid of me. But I never thought that all of this would happen. I don't really care about how you feel about this at all. Besides, are you working on moving out your stuff? You know there's only a week left in this month, right? But I can't. I just can't bring myself to pack up all my stuff. My mom just died. How can you act so cruelly to me right now? Hmm. Maybe because you lied about being with your mom and instead went away on a trip where you cheated on me? Well, I know I did all that, but still... But still nothing. You did all that, and that's all there is to it. But I broke up with my boss, and I just... I don't want to lose you, Max. Well, it's not always about what you want, and I don't want to be with you anymore. Do you understand? Please, I only made one little mistake. It's not my fault things got so out of hand. I never wanted things to end up like this. I'm so sorry that I hurt you. I might have been more likely to stay if we had children, but since we don't... I know this is the right choice for me. Please don't be like that. It doesn't have to end this way. Besides, it wasn't just one time, was it? You and your boss have been seeing each other for a whole six months before this happened, right? There you go, lying right to my face again. Do you have any idea just how shocked I was when I heard about your mom's fall from your dad? I'm so sorry. I know I lied to you, but I didn't think this would all happen. Well, it did! And when I called around to your friends to figure out what was happening, nobody knew anything! It was only as a last resort that I called your work looking for your boss, and when I finally got his phone number, it was his wife who picked up and told me he was on a trip with you! All while I had to be the one to break the news to your dad! You put me through so much because of your lies! Max, I'm so sorry for all of this. I really never wanted things to turn out like this. Well, it's way too late to apologize for anything now. Please, you have to know that I never meant to hurt you like this, right? It's not just about your mom. It's that you were cheating on me as well. I just can't overlook all of this and act like nothing happened. I'm not going to close my eyes to the truth. I don't know what else to say except that I'm sorry and that I was an idiot. But I still just wish you would rethink this divorce. Well, it's not going to happen, Dawn. Apparently your boss's wife had been suspicious of him for a while, and even hired a private investigator to collect evidence against him. And now that I know all that she does, I feel like I have no other choice but to leave. But I don't know how I'm supposed to live without you! And now you and my boss's wife are suing me over this affair! Plus I can't even get a hold of my boss! Well, if you think that I'm going to change my mind and now come to your rescue, you're sorely mistaken. This is all happening because of decisions that you made. But even my parents are telling me that I'm not allowed to come back home to them. And does that really even surprise you? You lied about taking your mom on a trip, and while you were gone, she died. You weren't even there for her funeral, because you were trying to avoid having a talk with me on the phone. But how was I supposed to know that she was going to die while I was on this trip? I really did want to do something nice for her. I was going to take her out for lunch or something when I came back. I don't care what you say. Because I have no idea how I can ever trust you again. I'm sure that what you told me about your mom falling over while gardening was true. 
but were you really spending time with your parents after that? Or did you just use that as another excuse to go and spend time with this boss of yours? Just how deep do all these lies go? Max, please, I'm so sorry. I'll never lie to you again. I'm sorry about all of this. Just please don't leave me. I really feel like you aren't giving me any other options. I don't want to be with a woman who lied to me and cheated on me. And if this is all you're going to talk to me about, then I'd rather we not talk anymore at all. Just sign the papers, or else I'll have to go to my lawyers. We'll make you sign it. But can't we just meet and talk in person one last time? Please, just come home to me, Max. I've already told you that I have nothing to say if this is all you're going to say to me. But I won't have anywhere to go after this week, and there's no one else that I can turn to for help. That isn't my problem anymore. If I were you, I would just focus on packing up as fast as you can. Please, Max, you have to forgive me. I promise that I'll never cheat on you or betray you or lie to you ever again. I'm so, so sorry about all of this. It doesn't matter if you apologize after it's already done. And you wouldn't be apologizing if you never got caught. Just please don't leave me. You're the only person I have in my life to turn to now. You used your mom to lie to me about an affair you were having. I just can't be with a girl who would do something like that. I trusted you, and you betrayed me, and I don't owe you a second chance. Max, don't be like this. I'll do whatever you want. Just please, let me stay with you. I already told you. The answer is no. We are getting divorced. You lied and cheated to me, and that's all there is to it. After that, I had to get my lawyers involved again, since Dawn refused to sign her divorce papers. I already had proof of her affair from her boss's wife, and it saved me a bunch of time. I heard that she also divorced her husband when he came back from his trip as well. It seems like they both thought they were never going to be caught, but it was just a matter of time before the truth came to light. Dawn and her boss had been seeing each other about three times a week for the past six months or so. So much happened in that one week that the whole thing feels like a blur, if I think back on it. But now I'm on my own, and I'm looking forward to starting a new chapter of my life. Thank you for watching! Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.